Hey all, it's Aurelius. In this video, I'm going to compare and share the differences between MailChimp versus Substack versus Medium so that you can determine which one's right for you. I feel like it's been a while since I've done one of these comparison videos, but thanks to a subscriber of mine, he mentioned Substack as an email marketing platform and whether he should use it for his business. So I went in, looked at it, and to see whether they should use Substack over one of their more major branded email marketing platforms. First of all, for transparency purposes, I don't use MailChimp or Substack personally. I use a different email marketing platform called Drip. So where my experiences and opinions will come from is based on email marketing, digital marketing, and creator experience of over 14 years. Without wasting any of your time and to get to the gist of the question of whether you should use MailChimp, Substack, or Medium, I would say, what is your purpose? You know, What is your goal of writing these newsletters or emails that you are planning to write? Do you plan on making money from your writing or do you simply wanna send out email promotions or to alert your subscribers of your latest blog posts or your latest video, or you want them to buy your products. You wanna be able to segment your email subscribers based on activity or interest or geographical location, then MailChimp is the one for you. As a side note, when I refer to MailChimp, I also reference to other email marketing platforms such as Aweber, GetResponse, Constant Contact, You've got Drip, which is what I use, and also ConvertKit. You also want more flexibility in terms of how your newsletters look like than MailChimp's for you too. You have a little bit of a budget to play around with and perhaps you wanna scale up your business, then MailChimp's for you because they do have paid plans where they offer more advanced features and tools. On the contrary, if you wanna get your newsletter up and running quickly and easily without the fuss, without any landing pages without doing any of the sophisticated CSS and coding, then Substack's for you. Substack does lean more towards writers. So if you're a professional writer or you wanna write stories, reports, or all sorts of things like that, and be able to monetize that, Substack's perfect for that. The reason why is because they integrate nicely with a paid newsletter type of subscription model. Essentially a paid subscription is what you add to your Substack. So only paid subscribers get access to exclusive articles and content that you post. And that's where they charge 10% of what you make. Using their calculator, based on 100 subscribers, paying $7 per month, you're looking at $543 per month in revenue. With MailChimp, you're not able to integrate this all-in-one system where you can add a paid subscription. You'd have to look for a third-party tool or shopping cart system so that you can start charging your email subscribers. And even when you do that, you have to do some back-end work so that you can determine who is a paid subscriber versus non-paying subscribers. Now for Medium, it is different to MailChimp and Substack in a way because it's really a blogging kind of platform where you post articles. In terms of monetizing and making money from your Medium posts, it's based on member engagement. You can see here, it's based on how members engage with your stories, and this is determined by member reading time. However, what's great about Medium is that it gets picked up organically from search engines. I feel Substack's a hybrid of Medium and MailChimp because one, you can build an email list. And on the other hand, your newsletters do look like blog posts or articles. Now with that said, I wanna dive a bit deeper and share more specific details between Substack and MailChimp because I think Medium, as you know, is more of a blogging platform. So I think it's only fair to compare between two kind of platforms that are somewhat similar. The first thing I wanna cover is, do you have the ability to export your email list and other data? Well, the good news is with Substack, yes, you can. You can create a new export in your settings by going there, clicking on create new export, and you can export your posts, email lists, and related email statistics. In MailChimp, of course, it is a major email marketing platform. So having the ability to export an audience is one of the most essential features. Medium does allow you to export your subscribers only if they have opted to share their email address, as you can see here. So this is quite limiting, which is why Medium isn't the best choice in terms of building an email subscriber base. Why is this important? Because you want to be able to own your list or your audience in a way so that you technically have a backup in case something happens. Next up, what I wanna show you is what it actually looks like, a newsletter or content that you post and publish to your audience. Here's what it looks like on Substance at first glance, this looks like a regular blog post that you see on Medium or WordPress. In addition to having this beautifully looking article, you've got the integration of engagement, right? You can write comments, 
your audience that is, and your email subscribers. What this does is it deepens your connection with your email subscribers. Here's what the Substack email looks like, quite consistent with what you saw online or on the web browser. And below your email subscribers can like, comment, and also share your article or newsletter. Substack also provides this archives page or kind of like a homepage of your Substack and all past issues, which is great. You can see with some of this demo content that I had already published, I've got digital product creation tips right here, the demo one and one right here, which is the latest one. You can also pin a particular article or newsletter at the top on your homepage. Subscribers can also see what is Aurelius's newsletter all about by clicking that. And this is where you can share more info about what your newsletter is about and what's in it for your subscribers. On the other side of the spectrum, you've got MailChimp. This is what it looks like in terms of the browser version of your newsletter. This is what they can read if they are on their browser. And you can see there's no way to engage in this content. You can't comment, like, and you can't see that as the creator of this article. People can subscribe via RSS if they wish to do so, but that's about it. To view past issues, they need to go to past issues. And this is all they see. They can see the date of when that particular newsletter was published. And that's all there is to it in terms of the homepage. Appearance wise of this homepage, of course, Substack does look a lot better. And really, I haven't even fully customized my Substack homepage. And speaking of customization options with Substack, you can go into your settings. Set up the basics such as the publication name, got one line description, add some tags, edit your about page, edit your welcome email. So this will go out immediately after someone signs up to your newsletter. Add a logo, and this is where you can put your profile image. As mentioned before, you can add a cover photo if you wish to do so. The ability to import your posts from MailChimp and other services. Furthermore, you can do even more advanced styling using their styling area here and edit the theme. For instance, you can change the color of the background. So let's say this green right here and change the accent color to something like red right here. Changing to post view, you can also change the color of the background right here and even go as far as changing the fonts of your titles and body. As mentioned before, you can start a paid subscription. In order to do so, you need to make sure you connect with Stripe first. So if you don't have a Stripe account, sign up. So I've connected mine and it's returning me back to Substack. Once you've integrated Stripe, you're given the option to actually set your subscription prices, set your monthly and yearly subscription pricing, and making sure you fill in all the other details like subscription benefits and more. That highlights some of Substack's major features and ones I believe are different compared to MailChimp. With MailChimp, if you want to do more advanced segmentation, customer journeys, and more advanced automations, then definitely consider MailChimp or other email marketing platforms. With MailChimp, you can create a customer journey or automation. So for instance, if a customer buys your product, you can take them off of the non-customers uh, email database so that they no longer receive those promotional emails telling them to buy that product that they just purchased. On top of that, MailChimp allows you to create a landing page. So that's the page where visitors go to to opt in to your newsletter. Simply select a template like this one here. We've got a lead generation template. And from here, you can fully customize what you see, adding a logo, add your heading, some body content and a call to action with your opt-in form. Substack does allow you to embed an opt-in slash sign-up form on your own website if you wish to do so. Simply go to its settings and then you can look under embed email sign-up form on other websites and simply copy and paste that to that specific page. What your audience sees to opt in to your Substack newsletter is this kind of page where you can customize the heading there and what it's about. All they need to do is just enter their email, subscribe, or if they're not ready yet, they can click on, let me read it first. That'll take them to your archives page. So really simple, straightforward, and not much else to it. In terms of pricing of Substack and MailChimp, as mentioned before, Substack is free, remains free forever until you add a paid subscription, which they take 10% of. With MailChimp, it's free for the first 2000 contacts that you store, but of course with limitations in terms of its tools and features. So which one's right for you, Substack, MailChimp, or Medium? I'm going to take out Medium out of the equation because that is a completely kind of separate platform more dedicated towards 
adding blog posts and articles. Between Substack and MailChimp, really is going to depend on your purpose and your goals as mentioned at the beginning of this video. Substack is geared more towards the writer or one that wants to publish a paid kind of newsletter where the content is going to be on the actual website or Substack. And if you don't wanna mess around with all the technical aspects of setting up a paid subscription, then Substack's for you. On the other hand, if you wanna take email marketing seriously and have more control, in terms of email segmentation, automation and customer journey, then MailChimp may be for you. And again, I'm speaking on behalf of other email marketing platforms that you may want to consider. So hopefully this video has given you more insight so that you can decide whether you should use Substack, MailChimp or Medium. If this video is helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I'd highly appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications too so you don't miss out on any future videos just like this. In the meantime, do watch these next relevant videos. Thank <music> you.